Alright, you know it's getting serious. Ready? Hey guys, welcome back to another Barrett EF Falcon video. I bought this car all the way in February. I pulled the engine in March, and since then, the car has essentially been on jack stands and hasn't moved on its own power. We've been working very hard to get this thing running. However, we have been waiting for one part, the final piece of the puzzle, and it has finally came. So guys, this is it. This is the wiring harness that we've been waiting for. Shout out to Bill from Hooten Harnesses. Have a suss of this. So right here, is our um, plug and play harness. Essentially, this should just plug into the car and we should be able to turn the key and it should start. Bill went to the extra length and did some more wiring for me. He also wired, wired in this can barra. Massive shout out to TI Performance because they supplied this for me. Yeah, Bill has wired this in so it can just plug straight into the wiring harness and I don't need to do any work. All I need to do is wire in the shift kit, which I think comes off this, I don't know. So there's a bunch of Deutsch connectors that separate different things like the injectors to make it really easy to install. However, he did recommend that I install this engine harness with the engine out of the car. So apparently it's a little bit of a nightmare to do it with the plenum on, but we're gonna give it a go first and see what happens. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> So this hardware that I have, a lot of you guys have been questioning where I've got it from. And a lot of people, when they see the barrow, they're like, wow, where'd you get where'd you get this stuff? This is thanks to Dominator. Dominators and Motorsports have hooked it up with the barrow goodies. So I've got a uh, MLS head gasket, uh, head studs, oil pump gears, valve springs, all from Dominator. So yeah, it should be able to take a lot of power. All right, another shout out. Shout out to Kobe from Ford because he hooked me up with some OEM spark plugs for the BF Gassy. I think this is what everyone uses on these things, the uh, factory Ford spark plugs. Um, I've been advised by a lot of people to get these. Ford. Gap to 0.7. Someone told me 0.7 gappage. Oh, what the fuck? I didn't take the other ones out. Oh. Oh, oh damn. Good that we replaced these. That's crusty. It looks like there's a bit of corrosion on the spark plug just around there, but on the actual firing part, it doesn't look too bad. It looks like it's had a good life. So I've had to look at my previous videos to see how I took um, this loom off the barra originally, and it routes a little bit different to what I remember. So we're gonna have to disconnect it and stuff. Luckily, yeah, Bill has put some uh, Deutsch connectors everywhere. So it should be pretty simple. That goes down to the trans, I believe. But yeah, it's just gonna be a bit of a nightmare as there's not much room with the Raceworks fuel rail. This beast of a thing, it's massive. Unnecessary, I think, but we did it anyway, because it looks tough. A few moments later. Take a bite. Yeah, sir. Oh, thanks, you, man. <laughs> nom nom. <laughs> eat it. Eat no it. Way. Eat no it. Way. No way. You wouldn't. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. For the video. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Down. Rex doesn't even drink of a drink that I've drank and he's <laughs> eating shit off the floor. <laughs> <sighs> Alright guys, bit of an update. Um, had a sausage roll thanks to Imran. Sponsored by Imran. Get a close up on that face. That beautiful face. God Zeus. damn! <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Alright, so we... <laughs> what, how long has it been? Like two hours? Two hours. Two hours and I've got a total of like four connectors plugged in now. I can see why pulling the engine would have been probably the smarter option at this point, but that's all right. We're going to keep going because Sieb's pulling the engine. I'm loving it. Yeah. Oh, my gusta, my gusta. I just don't know which knock sensor goes to which knock sensor. Oh. <laughs> oh, I can't. I'm sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sensitive. <laughs> 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 
Alright guys, another two hours have passed since I last spoke to you. We have done a lot more. So I had Imran help me. I, <laughs> I had him help me push some wires through to the cabin. As you can see down in there. Um, we've got the ECU around here just for now because I haven't made a bracket for it or got a bracket from the wreckers. Got the ABS plugged in just behind the power steering. Sorry, the transmission cooler. We've also got the intercooler sort of tucked up really close to it. It's very tight in there. Not ideal at all. Everything on the top is all plugged in as well. I don't have the harness routed exactly in the right position. So there's a little bit of tension on here, which I'm not liking. If I need to rectify that issue, I have to pull the engine out. I don't really want to do that. Everything's essentially plugged in there. All I need to do is plug the can barrel in and wire in the shift kit. That's about it. And the thing should start. I just need to fill it up with oil as well. Alex is bugging me to fill it up with oil, so we'll, we'll do that. It's gonna be good as good to do as well because then if there's any leaks, we'll find out before we start the car. I'm running some 10W40 because we're gonna um, run ethanol and this is really good oil for ethanol. If oil just spills out the bottom, we're in big trouble. Right, oil filter. Legit, it's on the okay line. I was pretty lazy when it came to picking fluid for this thing. I couldn't be bothered doing the research, so I just got some power steering fluid. <laughs> if she blows, she blows. Shout out to our Sunny at Four Performance Salvage. He actually provided us with this beautiful power steering fluid thing. Eh? No, power steering pump, that's what it's called. <laughs> and he also provided us with the alternator too. It's almost as handsome as you, Sunny. <laughs> it's the cleanest power steering fluid I've ever seen. Yeah, right. And hopefully it doesn't leak. I'm worried. Looking pretty tough. I reckon you should crank it. No, we can't. Got to do a lot more before we can crank it. Tell me what I need. I can feel it's on the fucking plug. Strap push it. Oh! Yes! Fuck yeah! All right. Well, it's the next day. Um, I sort of gave up at that sensor, but this morning we got it in. Thanks to these boys. So there's only a few things left that we need to do. We need to siphon the 91 out of the tank. We need to fill up with some 98. We also need to fill up the transmission with fluid. And we also need to um, wire in the shift kit and then everything is done and ready to start. Um, there's no coolant in the car and I don't have all the coolant lines. So we're not gonna be able to run it for too long. That's even if we get to that stage. So we're gonna try to put everything together now and hopefully the thing actually turns on and fires. <laughs> You've got one hose that goes on top, and you drop that into the petrol tank. You've got one hose that you put into the jerry can. And hopefully there's enough petrol that the actual hose goes in it. Kids, this is how you get cheap petrol these days. Oh, Alex, you Cunt. fucking dumb. Uh, come down to Winton on the 28th of October to see some hectic skids. This is the moment of truth. We have everything plugged up. My heart is racing because I don't know if all my work is going to work. But we have the fuel pump uh, disconnected for now. But Bill said that we can start the car and crank it without the shift kit installed. So we're going to crank it to get oil pressure. And when we get oil pressure, I'll go in for the start. But I don't know if it's going to actually properly start without the shift kit. I know that it'll crank, but I don't know if it'll properly start. All right, for the first time, we're going to put the positive and negative terminal on the battery. Negative connected. Here we go. Damn, she's live. So we should have power in the car now. Oh, I'm, I'm so nervous. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Right. Holy shit. Holy shit. It's, it's not gonna start, but let, let's keep going till there's oil. Sounds tough. Can't believe it. Uh, it's actually turning over. What the hell? This is crazy. Did you put oil in it? Yeah, there's oil in the, in the engine. Oil. Hey, there it is. Mint, look how clean that is as well. Watch out, mm -hmm. So clean, all right. We actually have oil. Nice, now to connect up fuel. 
Fire out, I am very excited for this. Holy shit. Present. For Lachlan, don't spill it. It's not sealed. <clears throat> Bit bubbly. So we're gonna do connect one wire to get the fuel pump to run. Uh, the fueling stuff um, we sort of butchered. There's also a base pressure for the fuel. I don't know what that's set at. So we're gonna have to adjust the regulator to see. 98. We're start. I don't know if it's gonna start. The thing's not even, I can't even hear the pump priming. Let's see what happens. Oh! You hear that? I heard fuel pressure. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, leaking. Is it? Yeah. Fuck, where from? The donkey forgot to uh, tighten up his fuel pump, so it's just sprayed <laughs> everywhere. Fuel pump, you mean fuel uh, filter? Fuel filter. So he's, he's cooked it a bit. Yeah. Stop, 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 oh, stop. Oh, fuck me. Oh, fuck. Unfortunately, um, yeah, we've had a massive fuel leak at the injectors to the rail. I don't exactly know what's caused it yet. It's not looking good. We're going to definitely have to take the rail off. I suspect that maybe an O-ring's pinched, but... I did it so carefully, I took my time and everything. I can't imagine it's the like a O-ring that's pinched. I used a lot of lubricant, I don't understand. So we're gonna to attempt to take the rail off. Probably should have done that to plug in everything properly with the wiring harness, but I didn't really see a need to. It's actually really difficult to take off as well. Yeah, bit of a bit of an L. Not too sure where we'll go from here. I'm gonna keep working on the car and try grind it out. Yeah. All right, so we're about to take the fuel rail off. And we're gonna see if I have made a mistake or not. I don't think I have, but we shall find out. Ah, oh, they've all got the O-rings in there. Look at that. That's, yeah, look. What the hell? Confused, very confused. All right, let's see if I can move this out the way. So when I took the rail off, I noticed that these uh, bolts right here aren't really holding down what do you call it brackets right here so I have a suspicion that because they're loose they weren't pulling on the injectors hard enough and that could have caused the leak because everything else seems right so I think we're going to try different bolts and maybe I might fix it serious you go oh, Nike fades right, thank you. You know so I pull the pin it? and then just the pin, yeah. all right all right so I gotta plug some more shit up Let's hope you don't have a hectic <laughs> title for this video oh man I really hope not I don't want it I don't want to catch on fire for a clickbait on this one Daniel this guy is just doesn't know what he's doing he's a woke youtuber what did you call me huh? nothing ever starts on first attempt you realize every time he does this it's like 25 attempts, and then he's like, yeah, first attempt, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Peter, turn it on. Again. Close enough. Hmm. It should at least sputter. Can you take the cap off the turbo too? Peter! Yeah. Peter! Peter! You know what, that could be it. Nothing? Right. Oh. Did, you stop, did you stop it? Yeah, I stopped it, but it should have kept running if it was getting fuel. Still nothing. You need to twist. Oh, here we go, yeah. Oh, there we go. Uh, so ground one of them out. 5 VDC. Hmm. So you can put them on the uh, 20, 20 volt DC setting on the multimeter. 
Yeah, it's on the on the right setting that I usually use. Good morning. Alright, yeah. boys. Get your cameras out. Get the cameras out, boys. Twentieth ah. time is a charm. This has to be it. What's the fuel pressure at? Forty-five. I'm fucking, my heart is racing, bro. Yeah! 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 Woo! Whoa, she runs. Come on. Double. What was it knocking G -G. on? I don't know. I wonder what that was. I think it was this, probably this. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. That's alright. Um, we can't run it for too long, it doesn't have corn. Fuck oh, yeah. Alright, okay. So guys, we got it started. Um, there was a little bit of an issue, but we figured it out and we're all ready to go. I want to start it one more time. There was something like knocking really hard over here, but I don't think um, it was anything that, that bad. So we're gonna give it another shot and yeah, hopefully it runs a little bit better than that. But Bill said it was gonna run a little bit off because they are 1200cc injectors and there is no actual proper tune on this thing. It's just like a base map to get this thing started and rolling to um, the dyno. But yeah, it should be good. See what happens. <laughs> Sitting on something. No, it's coming from this side. You know what's weird? That knock it relates to your fuel pressure. Whenever you knock, the fuel pressure drops down. I don't know. I don't, it can't be related. What the fuck? There must be something yeah. beneath the car. I'm not look underneath and you start it. I'm not getting underneath though. Fuck. Alright, go for it. Oh, fuck. Put your ear up to your sump. Oh, guys, we have an oil leak. We're at. <laughs> Oh no. Oh shit. Oh man, this is not looking good boys. I have a theory. It's probably leaking from further up. Oh my god, my head gasket bro. Rock cover. You reckon? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, it's coming from the turbo feed. Look, see it's like coming from, it looks like above the engine mount. Yeah. See that? Yeah. Sounds like this side, doesn't it? Yeah. It's pissing me off because the where it's leaking from is a cheap eBay fitting. So that could be the reason. It's just a cheap eBay line that I got. And I've cheaped out there. So that could be the reason, but... Alright guys, so we figured out what that knock was and well, we didn't really figure out what the knock was, we figured out what was causing that weird noise. So we didn't have the map sensor plugged in, so there was a massive hole in the intake right here, but plugging it all up, even with a tiny bit of a hole to mount the map, it has sort of fixed that weird knock. So Bill thinks that it was like a timing issue, but it all works now and I'm going to get Nathan to start it. <laughs> Success! Alright, cut it! 
I really wish there was enough room for a dose pipe or something, but the power steering lines get in the way, the hard lines. We'll have to do something about that in the future, I reckon, but just for now, I'll probably just put a turbo shield on it and just run it like that. But yeah, mad progress on this thing. I'm super happy that um, it actually started. Small issues that we had to face, but we got it running. In the next video, we'll probably chuck some coolant in it. And we also need to fix up that oil leak, which is 100% coming from the turbo feed line. And there's also another one coming from somewhere else. So hopefully it's not a really hard one to get to. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.